We've been talking about marijuana and how it relates to women using it during pregnancy and breastfeeding. In our first segment, we looked at the fact that there are thoughtful, smart pregnant women who partake of marijuana to calm their morning sickness and indigestion, while new moms say they're doing it to fend off postpartum depression. And then in our second segment, we did an overview of how marijuana was a common treatment for pregnancy and breastfeeding in ancient and contemporary cultures. So what does the science look like regarding pregnancy, breastfeeding, and partaking of marijuana? I want to introduce you to some of the courageous doctors and researchers in this country who are looking into it. And courageous because they're pushing up against a really entrenched status quo in medicine here in the U.S. One of the best known and most definitive research studies on marijuana use during pregnancy was conducted by researcher Melanie Dreyer, PhD, also a registered nurse. In the 1980s, Dr. Melanie and her team did their work in Jamaica, where intake of cannabis is widespread. The study compared 30 pregnant women who used cannabis to 30 who didn't. The babies whose mothers used cannabis did better than the control group on all the scales of measure, especially reflexes and autonomic stability. That's a biggie because it's key to maintaining internal balance for activities like digestion, respiration, and blood circulation. What's more, there were follow-up studies, and by the time the kids were four years old, Dr. Melanie's team said, quote, they found absolutely no differences between the kids whose mothers didn't use cannabis and the mothers who did, some of whom were heavy users. The reason why this study is held in such high esteem is because it's virtually impossible to duplicate such a study in this country today. Getting permission to expose pregnant women and their fetuses to cannabis ain't gonna get much traction. In addition, U.S. women are running scared to even admit to researchers that they've used marijuana while they were pregnant. They're freaking doubt that either their babies will be taken from them or they'll be pulled down a legal rabbit hole that could lead to prison. Regardless, Dr. Melanie pointed out in a journal article in 1994 that it's customary for Jamaican women to use cannabis to treat their nausea and increase their appetite during pregnancy without any harm to their babies. Similarly, Dr. Ethan Russo, a neurologist, has done a thorough historical review of using cannabis in childbirth and has come away with a similar conclusion in regard to using cannabis to quell relentless nausea and vomiting during pregnancy. Check out segment two for more on his work. Another researcher, Jehan Marku, a PhD in cell biology who studies the chemical composition of cannabis for a living, did an overview of the research on pregnant women using cannabis. And his conclusion, quote, the scientific evidence discussed here suggests that cannabis may be used during pregnancy with little risk or consequence to your health or the baby's health, end quote. And one of this country's more famous doctors, Andrew Weil, wrote in his book, The Natural Mind, an investigation of drugs and the higher consciousness, quote, I consider marijuana a low-risk drug to take during pregnancy simply because it affects physiological processes so little, end quote. Breastfeeding while using marijuana is not so clear. I'm going to refer to the International Institute of Human Lactation based in Canada. This organization has poured over their literature. Here's what they say. This is a difficult situation to counsel in as there is so little evidence of long-term detrimental effects of marijuana use on the infant. But there is considerable evidence, they add, of long-term detrimental effects of artificial baby milks on infants, end quote. The point being, do you want to feed your baby infant formula, which is not a particularly healthy alternative, or breastfeed your baby while using cannabis, in which case there's very little evidence of harm in doing so. Yeah, we do need much more research to get definitive, clear-cut answers. But at this point, if you're a smart, conscientious woman of childbearing age, I'd suggest that you review these works and make up your own mind. We'll post all the references below to make your homework easier. I'm Becca, and I'd really be interested in your thoughts. Let us know, and if you like what we're talking about here, I invite you to subscribe. Mm -hmm.